The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed it with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which somebody found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. And when it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good in the baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age." The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Over the past three weeks, we have been kind of dancing through chapter 13, uh, bouncing back and forth in different parts of it. Um, And it all begins with Jesus separating himself, and he starts to tell this parable about the sower of the seed. And we talked about how it kind of spills out of the sack on all this different land, different types of land. And he explains to us that when it lands on the good soil, this is like the person that hears the words of the kingdom and understands them. They hear the words of the kingdom and understands them or the word of God and they understand them. And now at the end of this gospel, after he said the kingdom of heaven is like all these different things, he says, have you understood this? So Jesus is asking all those listeners in the crowd, do you really understand what it is that I'm saying? Have you understood all these parables that I've given to you? Because it's all about the kingdom of heaven. Early on in the gospel, we hear the disciples and we hear Matthew tell Jesus, uh, Jesus in the gospel of Matthew, say things like, the kingdom of heaven has come near, the kingdom of God is near. Also, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. And now he's asking them, do you understand this? Do you understand what the kingdom of heaven is? And they're going to answer, yes. So let's kind of talk about these parables for a second to kind of find out what he's saying to them. Because at first glance, when you read them, they're nice, they're beautiful, they have neat imagery to them, but there's a deeper meaning that they would have caught on to right away because he's speaking to Jewish people and Gentiles in this crowd, people that have this old way of thinking and people that are being introduced into this new way of living, and he's trying to let them see how they're together. So he starts off with the parable of the mustard seed. And the mustard seed is a pretty interesting parable. And he starts off saying, um, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It's the tiniest of all seeds. Is the mustard seed the tiniest of all seeds? No, it's not, is it? You can go into HEB, go to the spice section, and find a jar of mustard seeds. They're not small, right? I mean, they're smaller than a sunflower seed, but they're really not that small of a seed, are they? So something's going on here. What are you talking about, Jesus? What are you getting at? And he says, well, you, this, you take this, the kingdom of heaven is like this mustard seed. And it grows into this great big bush and a great giant tree where the birds of the air will come and nest in it. What would be the big trees that would have been important to the people of the Jewish faith back then? They would be thinking about the cedars of Lebanon, the great oaks, the mighty trees that would be used to build the ark. Not a mustard tree. And in fact, there's no such thing as a mustard tree. What does it turn into? A bush, right? It's a scrub brush, really. And the crazy thing about mustard bushes, these little scrub brushes, is that once they start growing, they don't stop. They'll just start expanding everywhere. In fact, people say that it takes a lot more time to pull out the mustard seed, uh, the mustard bushes, than it is to plant new ones. So this is an invasive species. The kingdom of heaven, he's telling this crowd. It's like an invasive species that's going to take over everything and you can't control it. 
Do you understand this? And then he goes to this conversation about the yeast. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman takes and kneads with three measures of flour and it is all leavened. What kind of bread did people eat for special occasions back then for sacred events? What kind of bread was it? Unleavened. Very good. Unleavened bread. So this was the kind of bread that they had in the Exodus. They didn't have time for it to rise. This is the kind of bread that was given to them in the desert, the manna that fell down. This is the bread that they would have at the Passover, the bread that they would use at most of the festivals. And you know who was probably the people to make this bread? It wasn't women. It would be the priests. It would be the people in the temple. It was a man's thing that they would do to, 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 to prepare this unleavened bread. So now Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to yeast that a woman is going to take and make into an enormous loaf of bread. And then he says it's three measures of flour that this, this woman's going to use. I always thought that was like three cups, you know, like a loaf of bread kind of thing. No, three measures of flour is 50 pounds. Yes, right? Yeah, so it, could you imagine taking like you know, those, those pound sacks of flour? Could you imagine if they were all up here like this big mound of flour? And if we were to take that yeast and mix it together and with making it to a dough, how large that loaf of bread would, right? I mean, that'd be pretty huge, right? The kingdom of heaven is something that will expand and expand and expand, and it's going to include, yes, those sacred things, but also the things that we may not even consider sacred yet, the clean and the unclean, the men and the women, it includes all. Do you understand this? The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure in a field or a pearl that the merchant's looking for. It's this prized possession that these people are willing to sell absolutely everything to have it. Now, back then, when you were giving especially your finances or the material possessions that you had, you would give a tenth. It was part of, the, part of their understanding and how they were to do stuff. Uh, so they would go to the temple and give a tenth. Maybe it was their tenth animal. It was the tenth crop. It was a tenth of their wages, whatever it might have been. But it also got to this place where you would go to the temple and bring your money and exchange it for temple money, and then you would buy a sacrifice because it's easier than traveling with the goat. Jesus looks at them and says, the kingdom of heaven is like this prized possession that somebody's willing to give absolutely everything. They are going to risk it all to participate in it, to have it, to hold it, to let it be theirs. Whatever is standing in your way of giving everything to this, well, that just might be the thing that you're making your God. Are you willing to get rid of everything to participate in this kingdom of heaven? Do you understand this? And then he goes and talks about this net. The kingdom of heaven is like a net it's thrown out of the boat, and it collects fish of every kind, red fish, blue fish, one fish, two fish, all these fish come onto the boat, and then these, they get separated out, the good and the bad. This is kind of like last week's sermon that Pastor Heather gave about the wheat and the weeds, and you don't pull them out at the same time. She talked about patience. If you haven't listened to it, it's a good sermon. Go back. And now we have the same kind of message today about these good fish and these bad fish. The net is a symbol for church. It's also a symbol for the temple. Boats are symbols for, for churches. I mean, look how this is built. It's almost like the underbelly of a boat. A lot of churches have been built that way. The net belongs to God. The boat belongs to God. The fish belong to God. And God's the one that sorts them out. That's not our job to do. But do we believe that this net is wide enough to capture it all? Are we willing to sell everything to participate in it? Do we recognize that it is just ever growing and it'll never stop and it's expanding? Do we realize that it's an infectious growth that will just constantly keep going and going and going? Do we understand this? And then he closes after that question and they all answer. Do you remember how they answer? They say, yes, we understand this. And I love that Jesus is like, good. So... He says, therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. It's not that the old is bad. The old way of looking at it, even the Jewish life, that's not a bad life. That's not what he's saying. And he's not saying that the new is going to replace that. These all work together. That is the kingdom of heaven. So it's like a wise person, this master is going to bring out and look at both of these and share both of these. So if you've heard this, if you've learned this, if you understand this, 
then go out and share this and take everything that you have out into the world to share it with others, to let them see the kingdom of heaven through you. I almost wish it would just say, seek God, serve others. Have you understood this? Amen.